My name's Andy Stamford clark I'm the Chief Technology Officer for IBM UK in Ireland. I was speaking at a conference for the local Chamber of Commerce about some of the Internet of Things technologies we're using in our Watson IoT headquarters in Munich. Uh, we've got a solution that uses thermal imaging sensors for monitoring the coffee queue in the coffee bar to see how busy it is. And Duncan East, the Head of Sustainability at Marwell Zoo, was in the audience uh, and he came to me and suggested that technology might solve a problem that they had here at the zoo. Here at Marwell, our larger bodied species, like our antelope, are housed in relatively large buildings where instead of heating the whole building, like you might do at home, we use individual infrared spot heats to, to heat uh, the areas where the animals spend their nights. Uh, and that way we save ourselves some energy instead of heating a very large space by heating a relatively small space. But the infrared heaters are not individually controllable. There's no thermostatic control, so they're either on or off. And what we'd like is a heating sensor that will only heat the spaces if the animal's actually in them and will turn the heating off uh, when the animals go outside. And what Andy from IBM has been able to provide is a sensor that can detect the presence of the animal and turn the heating on in exactly the way we require. The solution's got three components. The, the first part is the thermal imaging sensor, which takes 16 a grid of 4x4 four four spot temperatures of the bedding area. And it sends that over Wi-Fi up to the Watson IoT platform using MQTT. And there the data is analysed by a neural network to decide if it thinks there are some animals present or not. If it thinks there are, it does two things. One is it sends us the control signal to the heater to turn it on or off, according to whether the animals are there or not. And it also takes a photograph with a, a Raspberry Pi with a, with a infrared camera to allow us to verify whether there actually were animals there or not by visual inspection, which means we can then use that to retrain the neural net if we need to, if we see that the uh, sensors are kind of over-sensitive or under-sensitive. The advent of the Raspberry Pi has meant that uh, we've been able to build solutions much more easily because we haven't got to get out the soldering iron and do lots of electronics before we get started. It's a nice single board, cheap Linux computer which, with all the GPIO pins which you can then link up to the, the various things we want to control. In this case we're using the Raspberry Pi for the uh, the photo, so we're using the, um, the IR camera, uh, so there's no additional electronics involved with that. But the, the other single board computer we're using is the WeMOS, which is the ESP8266, which is an Arduino class device. Uh, that's in the thermal imaging sensor using I squared C to talk to the, the thermal sensor. And then the other unit is um, another one that's controlling the relay to switch the mains power on and off. And again, having an off the shelf single board computer, which is very easy to program, either as a Raspberry Pi or as an Arduino, makes the, you start off from such a high level, you now build your application logic on top of it, rather than having to go right back down into the weeds and starting again building everything up from scratch. So the, the time to value is enormously quicker than it used to be before the days of these wonderful little computers. Uh, across the whole of Marwell, we've got about a hundred of these infrared heaters in all the different animal houses. But different animal species behave differently. So some will use their bedding all the time and some only for short periods and then they'll get up and move again. So we think by the time we've spread these sensors across the whole park, we'll be saving between 10 and 30% of our electricity consumption for heating, depending on the species of animal. And that's quite a considerable saving, both on money and on carbon. For ourselves, that's a bigger ambition for us, but we're also being watched by other zoos across the country who have a very similar problem with their own animals. Uh, so they're keen to see the results of this trial so they can think about implementing it in their own animal housing. I always think it's really exciting to work on real world problems uh, where we can really solve something for somebody, like being able to reduce carbon footprint or save energy. And being able to bring together the three technologies, Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence and the Cloud really shows a great way that these technologies come together in overall solutions and that's really what we want to inspire people to be thinking about to solve problems of their own.